Okay, so let's keep going. Let's go see Lo Mr. Lobino. You know, I'm that friend of, uh... Ooh, we have a lot of other places to go to. But to the Mizum Clum, where we get to meet Mr. Lobino. Hopefully he will be in this time. The god will not have to be so angry at us. Well, hopefully we won't keep feeling things up. There he is! Hi! First thing we saw about you is your pants. I beg your pardon. Are you Andre Lobino? We. Oui. That's me? You want my autograph? Oh, no. yeah. I was told you may be able to help me. I'll help? totally put it on my the My name subpoena. is George Stobart. I'd like your professional opinion. Well, okay. Shoot. Oh, really? Okay. Bang. Does the name Montfaucon mean anything to you? Sure. It was the most grisly spectacle in Paris until the revolution. Hmm. A public toilet? Montfaucon <laughs> was the place of execution for many thousands. <gasps> A dark temple of death with row upon row of arches, each one framing a grim exhibit. Scores of rotting corpses swung on creaking rope, while the crows devoured their flesh. Wow. That explains the image of the hanged man. I found a reference to Montfaucon in Ireland, in a village called Lochmarn. Lochmarn? That's where Pigram was digging. That's right. He'd left the excavation before I arrived. Hmm. Do you know of this? Do you know Pegram well? Not really. I met him at a conference. Hmm. I would have liked to talk to him in depth, but I didn't have time. When was this? I'm way too important. Oh, uh, back in the summer, uh, July, I think. Well, when is it? The second week of July? Maybe. Yes, it was. Uh, just before Bastille Day. Hmm. So Pegram was in Paris at the same time as the other victims. Pardon? Mm. Victims of what? Uh, nothing. Just thinking aloud. You're thinking very aloud, George. Where was the site of Montfaucon? To the northeast, near the Canal Saint-Martin. But there's nothing there now. The old gibbet was torn down during the Revolution. Oh, that's a shame. I'd like your opinion on a medieval manuscript. Vraiment? Do you have it with you? No, it's too fragile. And besides, there are certain people who'd stop at nothing to get their hands on it. And like you. Uh, do you have a copy of the text? There isn't much. Only a few Latin phrases. I was kind of hoping you'd help decipher the pictures. Hmm. Without seeing the manuscript, uh, that's a tall order. Just tell me one thing. What does the image of two men riding on the same horse suggest to you? The Knights Templar. Does the Templar seal appear on this manuscript? I'd love to see that for myself. Hmm. Can you tell me anything about the Knights Templar? I sure can, Georgie. Georgie! Soldiers, diplomats, mercenaries, monks, bankers, you name it, the Templars fit the bill. Hmm. The greatest fighting force in Christendom, the Militia of Christ. Jeez. That's a tall order, isn't it? How did the Templars get their name? From the building in which they set up their headquarters. Oh. The king of Jerusalem gave them part of a mosque on the Temple Mount. It was said to have been the site of the original Temple of Solomon. The order became known first as the Knights of the Temple and later the Knights Templar. You're a mine of information, Andre. Oh, that's Glad good. to be of help, Georgie. Georgie! How come the Templars became so wealthy? There was a constant stream of new recruits to their ranks, many from noble families. They were required to swear a sacred oath of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So their money, goods, and lands were donated to the order. The Templars mm. soon held land in France, Scotland, England, Spain, most of Europe, in fact. The poor Knights of Christ became the wealthiest power in Christendom. Mm -hmm. And they didn't feel, you know, at all corrupt about it. Is it true the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found? Ah, who knows? So little knowledge of what really happened remains. Mm. Or if it does, the truth has never been made public. It what does. do you mean by that? The Templars have attained mythological status. 
like the King Arthur of the Britons. There are people even now who say the Templars still exist. Maybe they do. You do you think that's likely? No, not for a minute. Oh. The manuscript is being looked after by a friend. In Paris? Yeah, not far from here, in fact. Well, uh, just give me the address and I'll uh, come round and take a look. <clears throat> I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I should check with her first. A female friend? Yeah, mm -hmm. she's a woman. Maybe it was my imagination, but I noticed a predatory look in his eye. Suddenly, this friendly historian had turned into the big bad wolf. He's a French man. This friend who has the manuscript? Ah, uh, oui, uh, the anonymous girlfriend. She lives at 361 Rue Jarry. Ah, I know it well. I'll drop by just as soon as I can. Ah. Oh. Well, let me show you some other things. Take a look at this nose, Labino. Yeah. It really doesn't interest me, Georgie. Georgie. Does the guy in this photograph look familiar to you? No. Should he? What about this? What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing. Aww. Shake my I'd hand? I'd like to shake you by the hand, Andre. Not now, Georgie. Aww. Do you recognize this white powder, Andre? No. It's not cocaine. I know cocaine. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? Alamut is the name of the place where the Hashashin were based. Mm. Where is it? Somewhere in what used to be called Persia. Mm. I'm not too hot on modern geography, I'm afraid. The most recent map I have shows America as an English colony. Yeah, that was a while ago, wasn't it? What do you make of this tool? <coughs> Interesting. Where did you get it? From a dig in Paris. Vraiment? I didn't realize there were any excavations in progress in the city. Uh, not that kind of dig. What do you make of this ID card? Nothing. Nothing. What about the gem? What do you make of this? It's the biggest gemstone I've ever seen. Mm. Where did you get it? From Professor Pegram's messenger boy. Did uh, Pegram find this on his dig? Yeah, the site where this was found was a Templar castle. Do you think it could be part of the Templar treasure? No, oh, I shouldn't think so. You shouldn't? Thanks yeah. for your help, Andre. You're welcome. Georgie. I love how everyone calls him Georgie. Alright, let's go see Russell. And uh, no doubt Moo will be there as well. Come on, Georgie. Georgette. Georgina. Yes, how many Georgies? Female George names can I call him? Uh, Posti Policia. Oh, hi, Moo. Excuse me. Ah, Monsieur Stobart, n'est-ce pas? That's correct. You, you remember, remember me. me. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime is fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Mm. Yes, yeah, sure. Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Mamad. I oh. know he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Huh. That's interesting news. I'd like to report an assault. Yes, monsieur? Where is the victim? Me? I'm the victim. I've been harassed by a pair of thugs. I see. And where did this alleged assault take place? Outside the Hotel Ubu. Mm -hmm. They stopped me as I was leaving and went through my pockets. Could you describe the suspects, monsieur? One looked like a gorilla, and the other looked like a weasel. Their <sighs> names are Flap and Guido. Oh, I'll get them this time. Oh, sounds like you know Flap and Guido well. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic, in the Avenue des Hérissons. Ah, oh, thank you. You're very helpful. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. Maybe, maybe. What are you going to do about Flap and Guido, Sergeant? I'm going to bust them, monsieur. For years oh. I have been hoping to pin something on that pair. Now's my chance. I'll show them. And the inspector. 
Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks for taking me seriously. I'm only doing my duty, Monsieur. Yeah. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty-looking guy with a scar on his left cheek. No, Monsieur. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. He might. I believe Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. No answer to that? Is Rosso here? Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? Yes, please. Yes, I do. One moment, monsieur. Yay! Go, Mil, go! Stop off is here to see you, monsieur. Did he say what it was about? No, monsieur. Very well. Well, we... We, we could come into you. Okay, that came out wrong. We, we, we could come in to see you. You don't have to come out. Hi, Inspector. Remember me? But of course, Mr. Stobard. My mind is a well-ordered faculty. That, a that's mental good. classification system that's the envy of the Bibliothèque Nationale. Mm. No tricks, mark you, monsieur. Just exercise. Just as our muscles waste through inactivity, so our minds decay. But there is no need. If only people would learn to exercise their wits daily. Mm. If he was trying to impress me, it worked. He was pompous and patronizing, but he had style. He had Maybe flair. That's how he became the nanny. The bombing, you're too late. <gasps> Investigations have been closed. What? But I have been taken off the case. What? What about the murderer, the dead guy? It is out of my hands. Say what? Ugh. Ever heard of a guy called Marquet? Jacques Marquet? Marquet? I know the name well. He has a record for suspected blackmail, kidnapping, arson, and art theft. Huh. An all-rounder, huh? How come he's on the loose? His bravado is matched only by the courtroom skills of his attorney. Huh. Have you heard of the Knights Templar? Who hasn't? Templier. But of course, monsieur. Their fame is widespread throughout France. We haven't forgotten them, unlike the rest of Europe. It mm -hmm. was the King of France who persecuted them, though. Indeed. Indeed. That shook his cool. <sighs> Underneath his cultured facade, the man was real twitchy. Well, he doesn't like to hear that you think he was wrong. You're obviously a great admirer well, of the Knights Templar. They were men of great wrong. honor, monsieur. The flower of chivalry. Not mm. everyone would share your views, Inspector. Not everyone shares my passion for Bartok. But if the Templars no. were as honorable as... That's enough. I do not wish to hear your uninformed opinions, Stobard. Yes, sir. But... Why do you get so wound up about the Knights Templar? They've been dead for centuries. I shouldn't have pushed my luck. Ugh. Maybe his ancestors were Templars. Yeah. Whatever. I saw the anger flare in his eyes like a distant summer thunderstorm. The Templars were the first true internationalists. 800 years on, and still the world is fragmented by nationalistic flag-waving fools. Hmm. You will excuse me. But no, come back, come back. I have other questions. I'm sorry. I apologize. Move, bring him back. Excuse me. What do you want now? I want to speak is to Rosso. Yes, he is. Yes. Yes, I do. One moment, Miss. I will not say anything about your Templars. It's Stobart, Monsieur. He insists on talking to you again. Thank you, Moo. Oh. He stood there in indignation. Indignation? That doesn't sound right. What now, monsieur? I'm sorry. Have you heard of Professor Pegram, the archaeologist? Molly Pegram? The second son of Lord Barclay Pegram? Molly? I don't know. I only read about him in a magazine. So much for the efficacy of rehabilitation. What has he done this time? He made an important archaeological find in Ireland. Hmm. Do you know Pegram well? I have connections with the family, but I wouldn't say I knew him at all. Is his name really Molly? 
Of course not. That was the nickname he was given at school. <laughs> All his friends and acquaintances know him as Molly. Oh, poor Molly. Don't you want to know what I found out about the killer? I told you, monsieur, the case is closed. But I, I have washed my hands of the whole affair. Then I'll have to continue my investigations without your help. No. You must forget the business of the clown completely. I can't. Go back to being an ordinary tourist, Stobar. I can't. The game ends if I do that. Do you know a pair of thugs called Flap and Guido? I have known those two since they graduated from special school. Hmm. Flap is a nasty piece of work. But Guido is the real brains of the partnership. Where did you hear of them? I met them out front of the Hotel Ubu. They felt me up. They touched my underpant area. Did you find out the ID of the guy who was killed in the explosion? I already knew who he was. <gasps> you did? I heard that the bomb victim's name was Plantow. Your sources are reliable. He was a big shot at the treasury, wasn't he? Maybe that's why you've been taken off the case. I'm sorry, monsieur. I cannot comment. No. What was that psycho detective business you did in the cafe? It is my theory that the passions evoked in violent crimes create ripples in the ether. Invisible mm. to all but the possessor of a highly developed and receptive mind. I'm impressed. Yes. Can you bend spoons too? Ooh. I didn't think a man of your obvious intelligence would stoop to mockery. Aww. I'm not mocking. I've had personal experience of the power of the mind. Really? I used to get ignored at parties until I read a book that changed my life. Oh, no, really? What was it called? Hypnotism for fun and profit. <laughs> he looked at me as if I'd farted at a funeral. Ah. The power of mesmerism is a rare gift, not a party trick. But I did it so well. You're not going to try any of that psychic interrogation on me, are you? Do you find the thought of my probing distasteful? <laughs> Let's just say I'd rather you didn't. I've got more doubts than doubting Thomas when it comes to mysticism. Probe me, Too bad. probe me. I think you would make an interesting subject under controlled regression. The day mm. I let anyone mess with my mind hasn't dawned yet. No. Does this red nose mean anything to you? Hong Kong. I'd imagine it means you have not given up your pursuit of the clown. Never! You're absolutely right. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No. It's the face of a killer. The man who bombed the cafe? The oui. photograph was taken soon after the explosion. He'd escaped through the sewers, leaving a trail of clues behind him. Circumstantial evidence, Stobard. None of it proves a thing. It doesn't? What do you make of this, Inspector? Astounding. Where did you come by a stone like that? I was given it by a man in a bar in Ireland. Mm. Do you recognize the gem? It is unfamiliar to me. If such a jewel had been stolen, I would know it for sure. No oh, good. Does the name Thomas Merlin mean anything to you? Ooh, no, is. monsieur. Nothing. No. It's another one of the assumed names used by the killer. Ah, the famous killer clown case. Yes. Yeah. You might have forgotten all about it, but I still aim to find that guy. What do you make of this, Rosso? It is a tool for gaining access to sewers. Very good. Very, very good. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? No, monsieur. I suggest you ask Sergeant Moo about that. Oh, okay. God only knows why, but he collects matchbooks. He claims it is a hobby. Oh. What do you make of this white powder, Rosso? Cocaine. It is plaster. Damn. Say, you're good. Would you care to shake my hand, Inspector? Please don't be offended if I decline your offer, Stobard. The palms of my hands are particularly sensitive. Hmm. Sounds sensual. I found this tissue in the sewer. Yay. It would have been best if you'd left it there. Okay. Bye, Rosa. So long, Inspector. So long, farewell, Alfita saying good night. I've been told to ask you about Excuse a matchbook. Me. What do you want now? Oh, well, matchbooks? Does this matchbook mean anything to you, Sergeant? 
That's a double line Swedish with a crosshatch Bergman strike strip. Yeah. Now, that's unusual. Pre war Anderson hinging. Really? Mm. I haven't seen a reinforced Anderson outside of a private collection. It's rare then? In this part of the world, yes. There are only three places these are made Taiwan, Manila, and Slough. Slough, you say? Interesting. Well, I think we'll end our episode later, here. So we'll see you guys next time for more Broken Sword. Oh, yeah.